Good morning. Uh, John Gilkison here, National Public Observatory. Um, this is a part three, uh, the final series in um, <clears throat> laser guided star tours. And I wanted to preface the presentation here with a, a few remarks that I should have picked up in part one, but I didn't. And the first one is that, uh, of course, I want to show you the, the laser. And this is a uh, um, green laser that I use. It's a 5 milliwatt green laser. And uh, I can show it to you on the wall back here. It says, you can see it. So, uh, the other thing is, is you want to make sure you use, I hang this around my neck. And it's, it's a red light. It's variable. And if I need to show the public anything in my hands or anything, and also it, it, uh, you can explain to them how red light preserves dark adaption. They should never use white light. So that's a good idea to have with you. And for this presentation, I'm going to be using uh, uh, this... Um, Planosphere. It's uh, by Chandler. It's double sided. Uh, when I'm doing these presentations here using the maps, I'm only looking at a small section of the sky. And of course, when I'm standing out underneath the sky, I can see the whole sky at once. And so it's a lot more efficient on getting things done. Um, this presentation here has taken almost uh, two or three times as long as it would be to do the presentation out under the night sky. So, but for example, this is showing me, if I was going to do a program, this is showing me that the Milky Way is, is on the horizon all the way around us and the North Galactic Pole is straight overhead. Uh, so, uh, planospheres are very useful. They even have one for the Southern Hemisphere. If I ever went down there, I'd take that thing with me for sure. So I'm going to pause it here. We're going to get started on Draco. Here we are. This uh, These charts are not going to be quite as easy to see as what I was showing you before, but we're going to have to work with them. Um, here's the head of Draco right here, and then they show it off, going off, and then it picks up... Um, let me see here. It comes around here. Comes around the uh, little dipper, and then goes this way, and then back down. Okay. So uh, the important point is here. Number one, uh, as I pointed out, this star earlier, Thuban. But in this area here, right where it curves around and back towards the head, it uh, And here they're showing it right here and here. here these are the same star as Edaman. And this is just where the head attaches to the neck. Um, but in this area, there's... Here's the Cat's Eye Nebula. And they, they don't show it on this map, but right in this area is the North Ecliptic Pole. So it's, um, it's, it's probably right in near the cat's eyes somewhere. It's just not marked on this map. So for example, when I'm doing this uh, program that I'm talking about in late May, the North Ecliptic Pole is directly to the right of the North Pole. So that means that the ecliptic comes out of the, the Northwest and arcs across the sky and disappears into the Southeast. So this is an important cardinal point and and of course if the north ecliptic pole was on the left side of the pole it would just be the opposite so um, it helps to get these connections firm in your mind uh, when you're doing programs uh, there's a beautiful double star right here which we call a cat's eyes it's right in the head of draco and it's draco's head looks like a a box that's truncated on one side and it's the dimmest star 
because it's the one that's set in. And that can be easily shown in binoculars. And it's a very uh, instructive double. Here we are. This is a Riga, and it's setting in the west in late May, uh, but it's still fully visible. And it's a five-sided uh, figure of a constellation. And this is the Alpha Star Capella. It's a beautiful star. And there's three open clusters that run through it, 36, 38, and 37, um, which are beautiful binocular objects. Uh, one of the things I like to point out to the public is these three stars right here, which make a small triangle. And the um, um, star at the tip, Epsilon Auriga, is a long period eclipsing binary. And nobody knows why it eclipses exactly, it, but it might spend almost a, a year being dimmer. And then it'll brighten back up, and I think it may be some kind of interstellar cloud or some some cloudy material that's in orbit around the thing that blocks the view. And it happens every 27 years. And I got to see this in first time in 1983 and 1984, and then recently, two or three years ago, I've seen it again. So it's interesting seeing something in your lifetime like that twice. Um, so, um, here's Taurus the Bull, which is really set in late May. You don't see it, so I'm going to pause here. Okay, this is Hercules. And the major point to show in Hercules is going to be the keystone of Hercules, which is right here. And running in between these two stars right here uh, is about a third of the way down is M13, which is a magnificent globular cluster. And uh, all I make out of Hercules when I look at it in the sky is he's kind of dwarf-like. He have really short legs. Um, so uh, up in northern Hercules is... Uh, M92, which is another beautiful uh, globular cluster. And then he connects to the top of uh, Ophiuchus, which is the next thing we're going to try to cover, which is right here. Okay, here we have uh, Ophiuchus. I need to move the camera over. Here we are. Um, he's a giant constellation in the sky. Uh, as is Hercules, uh, Ophiuchus is laying on its side in the east in late May. But here's the shape of him right here. And um, we could make another shape out of... Uh, the uh, snake wrestler and that is we use the top and we just use these two stars here and we come back and we can have what we call Job's coffin um, which is not the whole shape of the constellation but it's a very memorable shape and it's, and uh, the public kind of likes that um, but Ophiuchus is wrestling a giant snake in the sky and we're only seeing part of that snake. This is Serpents, and it runs across the base of him, and it comes all the way up to here. This is the tail end, Serpents Caudia, and it ends in a really beautiful double star, Haya. And over here, it's not on this map, but it's the head of the snake, Serpents Caput. And uh, it's... Uh, so the whole the whole thing is... Not really brilliant stars, but it's it's a magnificent cal uh, constellation, and and this fills a lot of sky. So it is of interest. I mean, you're you're skipping a really a lot of sky if you don't mention it. So we're going to move on. Our final constellation is going to be Centaurus. 
here we go. We're going to finish up with Centaurus here. Um, half of Centaurus is below the southern horizon, so um, we're just looking at the top of him. And these two stars right here are in Hydra. They're the two tail stars of Hydra. And these two top stars right here are the most northern stars in, uh, in Centaurus. So, but they make pointers. They make a really large box in the sky. And right in the middle of that box is a beautiful galaxy, M83. Uh, but you can take these two stars on the western side and connect them together and they point right at Omega Centaurus. And Omega Centaurus is one of the largest uh, globular clusters in the sky in apparent size and brightness. Uh, and it's actually naked eye. When conditions are clear, uh, you can see it. And this is a really good uh, way to find it. You, you take these two stars, it points right at it. And then there's a star here and a star here. And these are really bright stars. And it's on a line in between these two. And it's a little bit towards the eastern side. It's not in the middle. But uh, once you know exactly where to look, and then it'll pop out at you. So, uh, Omega Centaurus is a good place to stop. It's NGC uh, 5139, and uh, I've been observing Omega Centaurus since the 1980s, early 1980s. Um, one other constellation, we better pick it up because I think I haven't mentioned it. And it's over here to the west of Corvus the Crow is Crater, right here. And it looks like a drinking cup to me. It's got a thick base, and then it's got these two arms that come out. So you might want to mention it. It's uh, definitely, it's a dimmer constellation than Corvus. And one of the things about Corvus, which I've seen people do, is some people have confused Corvus with the head of Scorpius, because you have these three stars. And it precedes the uh, uh, Scorpius rising in the sky, so this is a mistake that can happen occasionally. So that's all I have for you right now. Um, let's try to move the camera back a little and pop it up there we are uh, as I've said this uh, tour is taken about two or three times as long as it does in a real night sky but I hope this gives you some ideas and I did not focus on any constellations or stars that aren't up in May early June so there you have it. Uh, I hope this is helpful to you. And we'll be seeing you on down the road, everybody. Happy Star Trails. Bye.